Choose your character. Choose your character. Choose your character. Choose your character. This coverage is sponsored by Richard Sounds Manchester. Call 0333 900 0086 for the best prices and expert advice for TVs, AV and Hi-Fi. Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. I finished unboxing this LG C10 or CX OLED TV and we're going to go through the picture menu to see what's new. So if I can long press the gears button on the remote control to bring up the picture menu and let's explore the various picture presets that have been implemented on this television. So the default would be eco when you unbox this TV out of the box and then vivid would be the most dynamic shot mode standard and then there would be eco cinema would be probably one of the more accurate picture presets sports would probably try and make the greens a bit more saturated and maybe boost the motion as well but again if you are interested in accuracy then i don't think you should use the sports mode even when watching sports game mode would be important to achieve the lowest input lag that this tv is capable of for playing reflex based games and then hdr effect would be applying an sdr to hdr conversion to sdr content and then new for 2020 would be the filmmaker mode which is an initiative done by the uhd alliance in conjunction with a number of directors to try and reproduce the creative intent in the home. Now, you'll probably notice that on the 2020 sets, the Technicolor mode has gone. So Filmmaker mode would be one of the most accurate picture presets that you can actually obtain on an LG TV in 2020. And as I mentioned in my previous video, when unboxing the Panasonic HZ1000 OLED TV, there are two ways a manufacturer can implement filmmaker mode on their televisions. One of it is by triggering it using metadata either from HDMI or from streaming. And the other way would be to put a direct access button on the remote control. Now LG has gone for the former method. So this TV will be capable of detecting any filmmaker mode metadata in the source signal and then engage filmmaker mode automatically. But I believe that currently there are no consumer sources with the metadata embedded yet, but hopefully it will come in the future. And the ISF expert bright room and ISF expert dark room modes can be used by professional calibrators to try and calibrate this TV for both the dark room environment or a bright room environment where there is more ambient light and you need to try and use 2.2 gamma to lift the shadow detail but since it's really new and novel we'll just go into filmmaker mode and explore the settings in the picture menu OLED light is grayed out currently because I think the default is energy saving but let's say if you disable energy saving you will be able to adjust OLED light OLED light will determine the light output that is being pumped out by the screen. Contrast affects the digital white level. Brightness affects the video black level. If you lower brightness by too much, you'll be crushing the shadow detail. But if you actually raise it by too much, then you risk elevating the black level without any genuine increase in shadow detail. So we'll just go back to the brightness level of 50, which is the default and then sharpness will apply edge enhancement color will boost the saturation and luminance globally if you increase it of course if you decrease it then you will desaturate the picture obviously 
when calibrating and reviewing this television, I will try and see if the default value of 50 would be the correct setting. Usually it is because I will be using the advanced color management system and also maybe the auto color capability that has been developed between LG in partnership with portrait displays to improve the color accuracy. And then tint will rotate the colors in a global manner. If we go into advanced controls, there will be dynamic contrast, which usually just applies an S curve to the gamma or transfer function to increase the perceived contrast, but it can crush the shadow detail or compress the highlight detail. So generally for the most accurate picture, most video enthusiasts would turn this off. Super resolution would be another edge enhancement function. Color gamut will allow you to select either the white color gamut, which is the native color gamut of the panel, extended, which is slightly wider than what would be a reference standard, and then auto generally would be the most correct setting for both SDR and HDR. For SDR, the TV will be targeting BT709. For HDR, I believe that it will be targeting DCI-P3 within a RAC2020 signaling container. And Gamma dictates how the input signal will be transferred to the picture on screen. And if you have a lower Gamma, you will be brightening the picture mainly in the mid-tones to try and lift the shadow detail. It may cause the picture to look a bit washed out, but you will get better shadow detail in a bright room. And then BT 1886 would be the standard that is used within the film broadcast industry for SDR or standard dynamic range content. White balance allows you to calibrate the grayscale. Now there is a, how should I put it, color temperature preset, which can range from warm to warm tree, which is yellower. And then if you go up the options, then you will see the white balance becoming bluer. We'll leave it on the default on warm two for now. And then if we go into the method submenu, there are three methods here, two point, and then 10 point, and also 22 point. We'll go into the two point white balance submenu. And you can see that there are the low controls and the high controls. The low controls will affect the darker portion of the image and the high controls will affect the brighter portion of the image. And then usually for the greatest precision in terms of white balance calibration, without going into autocal or auto calibration, we usually suggest using the 22 point controls which allows you to adjust every 5% video stimulus interval at the brighter end until the lower end where you can adjust the 2.5% interval as well. And if we get out from here, we go into the color management system submenu where you can calibrate the three primary colors of red, green and blue and the three secondary colors of cyan, magenta and yellow. And under each color, there are three further parameters for you to adjust, saturation, tint, and luminance. So this would be what we call an HSL color management system. Peak brightness, even in SDR now, you can actually set the peak brightness to high, which will try and scale any SDR content to the highest peak brightness that this TV is capable of giving it an HDR effect. And then if we go into picture options, there are the typical noise reduction and impact noise reduction settings. So noise reduction would be applying a temporal filter. Impact noise reduction generally is a spatial filter to try and reduce mosquito noise and other impact compression artifacts. Smooth gradation, this is a decontouring filter that LG has introduced since 2018. But in 2018, I believe that it is bundled together 
with the impact noise reduction control and then they have separated it for 2019 and continued this decoupling for 2020 and there are several levels of intensity here that you can use i think if you wish to use it low would probably be the most optimal that can reduce the posterization without any drastic decrease in fine detail and then black level auto is generally best but if you want to select a video level you should go for low if you want to select a pc level 0 to 255 for the pc domain then you should select high we'll leave it on auto real cinema this will engage 55 pull down on this tv and also it will be able to extract 24p cadence from a 60p or 60i signal motion eye care if you switch this on then i believe that it will try and do some things automatically to adjust the brightness to protect your eyes but again as with most things that are dynamic i don't trust that it won't affect accuracy so i generally leave it off true motion this is LG's motion compensated frame interpolation technology. Now there are several settings here ranging from off, cinema clear, natural, smooth and also user. I believe that the cinema clear setting is entirely new for 2020. On 2019 LG TVs, I think there are the off, clear, smooth and user options. I think the clear option on 2019 models is similar to the natural setting on 2020 models but what cinema clear seeks to do would be to apply some motion interpolation using real-time analysis to adjust the mcfi on the fly so that you reduce the judder without incurring any drastic so opera effect or soe so I will be interested to see how this actually works in real life content. And then smooth obviously would be the most aggressive and it will probably introduce the most obvious opera effect and also interpolation artifacts. But let's go into the user submenu where there would be one setting that video enthusiasts would be most interested in and that would be the OLED Motion Pro setting. This corresponds to BFI or black frame insertion, but new for 2020, LG Electronics have managed to implement uh, 120Hz BFI or what I call variable intensity BFI. What basically this means is that by changing the OLED Motion Pro setting, the TV will be adjusting the duty cycle of the black frame so that you may achieve a higher motion resolution without incurring too much of the traditional side effects of black frame insertion such as flicker or brightness drop and then besides the settings of low medium and high there would also be the auto setting that again will be adjusting the black frame insertion on the fly by analyzing the incoming video signal so again, this will be something that I will be exploring in depth throughout my review period. But let's leave it off for now because again, I'm not entirely sure whether this would cause the screen to flicker in conjunction with the camera frame rate that I'm using. And then if we go up here, there would be the normal dejudder and the blur setting. Dejudder will be a applying the MCFI on low frame rate. By low frame rate, I mean 24Hz, 25Hz and also 30Hz content to try and smooth out the judder in films, whereas the blur would be applying MCFI on higher frame rate content, 50Hz or 60Hz to increase motion resolution and reduce motion blurring. And if I can get out from here, I believe these are the picture settings in the filmmaker mode and then if we get out and then there would be the energy saving option there would be additional settings 
eye comfort mode this would be similar to the blue light filter on android phones and also i think the iphone has a corresponding mode as well it basically just makes the picture much warmer to cut down the blue light which apparently can disturb your sleep but i think even though it is a good approach it would be deviating from picture accuracy and hdmi ultra hd deep color would be how should i put it signaling to your source device that this tv is capable of either HDMI 2.0b or even better HDMI 2.1 instant game response this would be LG's nomenclature for ARM or auto low latency mode basically when engaged this would automatically switch this TV to the lowest input lag when a compatible console starts playing a game and then together with the filmmaker mode this toggle here allows you to either change the picture mode to filmmaker mode automatically upon detection of the necessary metadata in the incoming video signal or you can just turn it off altogether so that even if the embedded metadata is in the stream this tv won't respond to it oled screensaver this is an oled tv self-emissive with all the superb picture quality attributes of true blacks, white wing angles and vibrant colors but of course it may be more prone to screen burn or image retention so as part of the whole anti-screen burn measure these are the solutions that have been implemented on this TV pixel refresher would be starting a manual composition cycle screen shift would be adjusting the pixels bit by bit to try and reduce the risk of image retention and then logo luminance adjustment will be detecting the logos on screen static logos in fact and try and dim it down to prevent screen burn or burn in and then on LG sets you can turn it off completely whereas when I unboxed the HZ1000 from Panasonic a few days ago, we noted that the logo luminance adjustment on their TVs, it can't be turned off, it will only go to minimum. But again, you know, I'll compare all this when I actually find time to review these sets. And I think that concludes it somewhat, but there's another thing that I actually want to show you. So if you go to the picture mode and if you highlight the picture mode settings and if you press a secret combination of buttons on the remote control and I will just tell you what it is. Basically, 1113111, what this will do is to unlock this secret HDMI override submenu. What this allows you to do is to force a certain color space or force a certain electro optical transfer function on the incoming video signal regardless of the source so this would be extremely helpful for especially professional colorists or professional users who let's say are using this tv as a grading monitor let's say if i was using davinci resolve which i am anyway to try and grade and HDR content but I don't have an HDR screen so I can use the screen because the files in DaVinci Resolve don't have the metadata it can't trigger this TV to kick into HDR mode but I can now on 2020 sets force it into HDR mode either PQ or HLG so SDR Gamma and then this would be HDR Gamma 2.4 and this would be ST2084 which is the standard used for HDR10 content and then HLG would be Hybrilog Gamma which is the standard used for broadcast HDR format and if we set it back to auto and again calorimetry you can choose between P3D65, BT2020, BT601 which is for standard definition BT709 for high definition and then also, I note that obviously when I <laughs> explored 
the Panasonic HZ1000 a few days ago, they also have these options here and they have a hard clipping option but I think on these LGs you can also set the mastering display peak luminance to 0, 400, 540, 700, 1000, 2000, 4000, 10,000 even if this display is only probably capable of 700 nits I haven't measured it, I'm just guessing from you know previous <laughs> LG OLEDs and then you can choose the mastering color space and then you can also set the max CRL and max FALL max CRL stands for maximum content light level max FALL stands for maximum frame average light level and these two metadata generally dictates how the tone curve will be adjusted by the TV to tone map the incoming HDR10 static metadata video signal now if you set the max CLL to be lower than the actual peak brightness of this TV let's say if you set it to say 540 nits then this TV will be hard clipping at 540 nits and yeah I think these controls here allow you to shape the curves just like a breast surgeon except that in this case there are no tits involved I don't know whether this will be useful to the normal users but certainly I think professional users and colorists who are going to be using these TVs as grading monitors or client reference monitors may find these HDMI signaling override functions fairly useful which is why I am also fairly excited for the 48 inch C10 or CX OLED because I sometimes would like to grade in HDR even though these days I can't really find time to do so but with this HDMI signaling override function then I can start grading more of my videos in HDR by just forcing a certain transfer function or a certain color space right I'll be spending the next week or next couple of weeks basically testing calibrating reviewing this TV so if you have any questions about this TV or if there is anything in particular that you want me to test just leave a comment in the YouTube section below if you found this video useful please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV test YouTube channel for more videos like this Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.